弥陀佛，阿弥。阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Thank you, everyone, for uh, coming to this uh, off-week um, Tai Shan Kai Yin Pian Treaties and Response and Retributions uh, speech. Um, we are going to continue from what we have last time uh, in, you know, explaining and making uh, the debut for our youth group and for us myself in, uh, uh, you know, sharing this wonderful practical book of karma. Uh, to everyone. Uh, last time, I think uh, I have mentioned about uh, the importance of understanding karma in uh, your own life, uh, in making sure that you do not pass, trespass any offenses, just like law, you don't break the law, and um, <clears throat> to avoid that in order to, you know, not lose your fortunes, to preserve your fortunes and to gain your fortunes, not just money, but good fortunes, you know, the merits in terms of, you know, everything in your life, uh, relationships, career, uh, family, uh, in health, in quality of life, etc, etc. So everyone wants a happy life and happy life was defined by this and understanding karma will help you to avoid the misfortunes or to reduce the mis. Uh, the karmic debt, which is the debt of misfortune that you have incurred in the past, and also to help you to um, preserve and to pursue um, greater good fortunes. That's the basic uh, understanding of this um, kind of teaching, you know. And for the pure land practitioners or any Buddhists uh, who truly aspire to live for six rooms, to aspire to be uh, more than just that, more than just having a good fortune. You want to be a bodhisattva to help a lot of beings. You want to be an arahat to gain enlightenment, escaping from these six realms. This is also important for us to learn uh, how to uh, navigate through this karma and as like a, a mirror to tell ourselves what is right, what is wrong. Over here, you're looking at the virtuous individuals is telling you what is right. It's quite broad, um, principle-based. It's not like uh, they won't show you the examples and everything because the examples are given in commentaries, um, commentaries by Master Ching Kong, but there are also ancient commentaries that use real-life examples. So this thing are all telling you, you know, what you should do. Uh, have you done it? What you should not do? Have you avoided it? Um, if there's even one or two that you have, you know, uh, not done well enough, or even you do the good, but you haven't improved it to the perfection or maximum, then obviously what you get will be that level. Uh, like for Buddha, he has done everything to the maximum. Obviously, you must understand it does not being accomplished in one lifetime. So give yourself a bit of break, but you need to be constantly on like like in work and everything you always need to keep yourself on tap for progressions so as this one for cultivation as well um so back to the point uh today we're going to learn about chapter two because last week last last week actually we're just talking about the off week we have done uh the introductions of the uh taishan kai in pian uh all right and the uh, commentaries, the, the pro forward from um, for this book, and then we've done cause and effect to the the whole core tenet of this entire book. Uh, only us are the person responsible for anything that happened to us, and whatever we receive is exact 
the measurement is exact as what we incurred. And this is a um, further explanation of how you know punishment works and how we should want to avoid it if we want to have good fortune. Uh, and among all the good fortune, long life is the best. Without long life, everything you have is useless. Because if you die, all the fortune or the family or anything, it doesn't work anymore. So now we go into the second chapter, the virtuous virtues, the virtuous individuals. So we would read by two lines and two lines. Okay, that's how they do it in Chinese. And usually it's in one, two phrase by two phrase. So first phrase is um, 世道则进, 非道则退, 不履邪进, 不弃暗示. He walks the path of virtue and avoids the path of vice and evil. He does not stray from what is proper and avoid committing offenses in secret, thinking that no one would know. So the first one is he walks the path of virtue and avoid the path of vice and evil. So that already tells you uh, if uh, you want to avoid any misfortune, you have to do the right thing, basically. That's the simplest way of saying it. Uh, you must always think about uh, when you do things, is it reasonable? Is it lawful? Uh, reasonable, lawful, uh, and also is it um, compassionate? Is it um, suitable for this uh, uh, for this situation? You know, in terms of you know, people, you know, it's read the room kind of thing. Um, then, if you understand that these three criteria has been met, reasonable, lawful, uh, and you know, fit the situation, uh, the social situation, fit the social situation, then you go and do it without regretting it, because what you're doing will will generate some good response uh, in return. As a human, we always uh, work on responses. We might always say that uh, don't um, how to say don't care about uh, what others say or anything. But but when we interact with people, people's responses are a way for us to understand what other um, what others has felt, what others have other how they receive your words and everything. Uh, it's one of the indicators of uh, you to understand them and also to interact with them. So if you do the right thing, um, that means you do not harm them. You do not want to uh, you know, hurt them. You want to make sure they actually got benefit from your actions. And that's what powerful virtue is about. Sometimes it may come across as brash or as a little bit straightforward. They can't take it. You see how much they can take it, then you give them the dose. If they really can't take it at all, just give them a more vague description. If they can take it, you can test the water, right? You can just try to see if they can really take the 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 the, the, the advice. Obviously, you need to make sure your advice is good advice in the first place. Um, that requires wisdom and experience, and you know, teachings help to help you. And you need to actually go through that to understand. And then, and then you like give the advice to this person if they can accept it, and they don't seem very angered or you know, try to force a laugh or something then keep you know give them even more advice they are close to heart so this is how you do it for people who are your family you give them three times uh, more more chances for advice um, but do not spare anything when you're giving yourself the advice spare nothing don't lie to yourself be real because the power of vice and evil is always coated with sugars coated with nice, sweet talks, uh, you know, making you feel nice and honeyed, but inside is poison. That's how people walk into the path of vice and evil. Who wants to be evil? Who wants to be a vice, wicked person? Everyone's, everyone is a hero in their own story. You ask the murderer, you ask the, you ask the robbers, you ask everyone, they will say the cool part about it. You know, you know I used to rob 100 mangs, you know, it's so cool, but they know it's wrong. But they coated it, right, to themselves first. You have to convince yourself, right, before you commit that. 
anything you do. Same of virtues, right? Virtue sometimes is bitter. Reality can be bitter. Reality can be hushed. Uh, but it's, it shows you the core. Like it shows you, not, not bitterness, but it shows you that um, it is what it is. And virtue means that you walk according to the way that is honest, that is true, uh, that is not deceitful, that reaches the other's heart and that helps them to be a more compassionate, to be a more wise person uh, in dealing with anything. You know, Even though something is right, you don't rush ahead into it. You look at the situation, assess it, understand the current environment, and then see what kind of advice you can give or what kind of action you can do that fits the situation and fits the environment. But you need to know what is right, what is wrong. So I'll, uh, I'm not going to too far, hopefully. So the first one is So virtue, what is right, what is lawful, and what is... Sometimes the law might not be the right thing as well. Uh, some laws are reflecting their society's uh, time. But what is right will always be right. That means a virtue is like a timeless element. It's always there. You know the five precepts. Uh, in, in 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 if you want if you don't bring out any of these tenets, it's hard to understand what is right. We will put our own interpretations. But who are we? We are not enlightened. We are not gaining any sagehood. We're still we could, we say no one is a saint. That's the reason why we have a word called saint. They are the one who set the path for us, so that we can get out of misfortune. Remember, there's consequences of everything. Do the right thing will bring you to the path of good fortune. If anything else, you can't take it. This kind of uh, thinking, think about fortune and misfortune. I'm bringing it down, stripping it down to the most bottom line mindset. I, I don't encourage that. This, this one is more like pursuing profit kind of mindset, which is you should upgrade that mind mindset. But if you can't take any of those high road thinking, then at least think about what is right will bring me fortune. What is wrong will bring me misfortune. I want fortune. I don't want misfortune. Hence, I do what is right and I avoid what is wrong. Obviously, you still need to improve from that. You know, whether fortune or misfortune, I still do what is right. And then you get better and better. But right now, we can think of that way. He does not stray from what is proper and avoid committing offenses in secret. Thinking that no one will know. So after this first 10 sentence of telling you how you should proceed with your life, do the right thing, uh, you know, avoid what is not, all right? Um, they continue with uh, Do not walk the path, do not stray of, from what is proper, you know, and avoid committing offenses in secret. They know that under people's eyes, it's hard for you to do anything improper. Well, I think nowadays, still do it. They do it in the park. Anyway, uh, just, yeah. All right. Look at look at nowadays, man. It's, it's not this one is not even applicable anymore. But yes, uh, a lot of people tend to be more relaxed in secret. Uh, in you know, if you're by yourself or just by a couple partner, by by your own family. Um, obviously, you get relaxed and more. You don't aware of what is proper ethic or not. I'm not. I don't think this word is trying to tell you you have to be strict and tense all the time. But you need to know what you should not do, no matter what. Um, that one of them is most obvious, sexual misconduct. Right. But not only that, okay, that's a very obvious, right? You do it in the secret, outside of the site or you know, outside of your current family. That's even worse. Uh, extramarital affair. But also the other aspect, like Mr. Yu's situation is also straight from what is proper and what's committing offenses in secret and his is like one of the you know the the, the um his Wen Chang society uh, that he has promoted you know saving lives and all that but in secret he's he still eat meat and then he still um you know uh used those paper improper in, improperly even though he promote reduce waste it's like saying that you know uh, we should not uh, um, we should not use too much plastic bag. We should reduce the plastic bag use. But every time we go grocery, we used to get one plastic bag from the shop. So these are also committing offenses in secret. You don't practice. You don't practice what you preach. Or 
um, outside of the person, you know, maybe your Buddhist circle, and then you do something else different. Be be consistent. Be one. Inside and outside is one. Right. Um, start from that. Then, you know, this is the first step to be good, basically. Baby steps, right? The first step, the first level is walk the path of virtue, avoid the path of vice and evil. This is quite reflective of Bible and other major religion teaching as well. I mean, just be good. Just understand what is good from these teachings. There's a reason why this teaching exists. To tell you what is good. So the first one is don't stray from what is proper. What does it mean? Don't stray from what is proper. No matter what you're doing, whether you're by yourself or by others, in front of the public or in, in private, you stay consistent. No stealing, even in private. You make sure that you don't take advantage of other people just because they're close to you. This is a form of stealing. I've been using five precepts. No no killing. No killing doesn't mean necessarily actually killing. That one is very obvious. No one needs to no need to explain that. But in terms of your diet, reduce the meat diet. It's also quite obvious, you know, vegetarian. Another form of more subtle way of uh, this precept is no invoking angers in others not creating troubles or annoyance towards others. You annoy others is also a form of killing, in a sense, because you create that negative karma for yourself and others. And they have hatred. Killing comes from hatred. So same goes for lying. Lying is the most obvious one, right? You say one thing and then you do another thing. So that's offenses in secret. Now, we continue. So it's all about wealth and uh, sexuality. These two is the major thing that people will commit offenses in secret. Wealth is called bribery, right? You do it in secret. Uh, sexuality is not the um, sexual misconduct. It's another form. Uh, yeah. So these two sentences is just telling you to be good, that's the that's the that's the first thing you need to think about. What is right, what is wrong. And if you want to do things right, you don't do things right in front of Adi Yen, not in front of the temple. You do it right because it's right. So no matter where you are, it is like that. You don't retreat from that. And congratulations, you're on your path of great for uh, great fortune. You're on the path to pure land. Let's go on to the second one. 